Hey everyone, my name is Kelvin and welcome back to another watercolor tutorial for Procreate. In today's video, I'm going to show you a really simple way to paint this kind of a uh, cloudy sky scene. And uh, I think the main feature of this tutorial is really about clouds because I was sort of playing around the other day and I discovered a really interesting technique for painting clouds uh, that I think you guys will like to see. So I've already got a blank watercolor texture loaded in here and uh, as usual I'm using the St. Petersburg texture because it, uh, it looks better on camera but any of the paper textures will work fine for this. Now for the brushes I'm just using the regular brush kit. I think I can do all of this with pretty much the abstract round, the fine liner pen and the water blender. And then I've also got a sketch here that uh, you can download in the description uh, just in case you want this uh, exact sketch to start out with. Now I have my sketch uh, as the very top layer and it's set to multiply. And uh, I'm just gonna lower the opacity just until I can barely, barely see it. And after that, I'm gonna start painting with the abstract round brush and I'm gonna choose a pretty saturated sky blue color, something like this. And at the uh, largest size, I'm just gonna quickly fill this out. And after that, I'm gonna use the water blender, uh, also at a pretty big size and uh, just soften this up a little bit so I can create a kind of a uh, abstract background wash. Now just make sure that uh, your wash fills in all the corners so there's no like kind of white intruding there. It won't really look right. So just make sure you pull the background out to fill the whole uh, sketch here. And then also towards the bottom, uh, try to make it so it gets a little bit lighter. But if you can't get it perfect, it's okay because we can use uh, uh, the selection tool to create a kind of fade. So this fade here is okay, but uh, I do wanna use the selection tool. So I'll grab that and set it to freehand. And I'm just gonna select the uh, bottom portion here and then feather that out quite a bit and I'll go to hue saturation and brightness for the layer and then I can just raise the brightness and sort of control that and I want it to fade off uh, basically from very dark saturated sky blue all the way down to a very desaturated almost a uh, cold gray color like this and after that I can move on to the uh, ground scenery here so I'll make a new layer for that and I'll choose a kind of green color a bluish desaturated green and that'll look pretty good. And I'll use the abstract round again and I'll just fill this out really quick but at a much smaller brush size. So I'm just kind of tapping the brush just because I wanna give this distant tree line kind of the look that there's a lot of small trees in there. Uh, but once that's done, I wanna give it some variation. So I'm gonna do that with the selection tool. So I'm gonna grab the selection tool and set it to freehand. And I'm just gonna first establish a selection that sort of goes just under the tree line, just like that. Then I'm gonna sort of step it down and go back, step it back like this, because I wanna create uh, the appearance that there's kind of like some rolling fields. So I have this kind of double-shaped uh, selection here. Now when I go to hue, saturation, and brightness for that layer, I can sort of lighten that area just to give it a little bit of an interesting texture. I'm gonna go into it again with that selection tool. But this time I'm gonna make a box-shaped selection just like that, and I'll feather it out. And I'm gonna adjust the hue to make this look more like a kind of a, a yellowish field. So I'm gonna go to hue, saturation, and brightness for that layer, and then just play around with this until I find a kind of warmer color. There we go. And then as a, a final touch here, I can grab the water blender uh, at a pretty small size and just sort of carefully sort of go with the grain here and just sort of mix up some of those boundaries just so it looks like the watercolor was kind of flowing a little bit. There we go, I think that turned out really nicely. I might add some color variation later on, but for now, I'll leave it as it is. So I can move on to the clouds now, so I'll do that on a separate layer. And I'm gonna start, um, I guess this video is gonna be mostly about the clouds, because the background scene is, is pretty uh, self-explanatory. But a cloud basically has three uh, elements. Um, it has the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. So we're gonna start with the midtones, and then later on, we're gonna add the highlights, uh, and then the shadows. So for the midtones, uh, it's going to depend on your scene, but I think it's good to have a warm midtone. So I'm going to choose uh, with the color slider a kind of yellowish orange color like that. And then I'm going to choose uh, not pure white. That would be pure white. But if I drag this down and select a kind of warm gray color, then I can grab the abstract round again, and maybe you know not quite the largest size, maybe 50%. Um, I can just rough out this cloud just by sort of dabbing it. And because I'm using the midtone, it's a little bit hard to see. So I'm just gonna go over this and just build up the rough structure of the cloud. And if you need help with that, 
Um, you can follow the sketch or you can just look at photos of clouds because it's not nearly as hard as it looks. Um, they just sort of, especially this type of cloud, uh, it just sort of builds up, builds up kind of like an anvil or something. So now I can move on to the highlights. So I'm going to do those on a separate layer. So I'll make a new layer and this time I'm going to choose pure white and at a smaller size, I'm just going to carefully go along the top edge here and just kind of outline this with some sort of uh, white shapes like this. Now, once I've done that, I'm just going to quickly uh, tap quite a bit harder in a few areas just to create some sort of um, billowing, uh, very light areas like this. Um, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just something that I sort of figured out, a little technique uh, that adds a kind of fluffiness to it. And uh, now I can grab the water blender and probably also at 40 to 50% size, uh, I'm just going to pull the bottom down, sort of the bottom edge of the ridge, I guess, of the highlights here. I'm not going to mess with the uh, front edge there too much. Just sort of pull it down like this. And after that's done, I'm just going to tap the top edge just to make it a little bit fluffy in just a couple of areas. And next, I'm going to grab the uh, abstract round again. And on the same layer that I did these highlights, I'm going to do another layer of highlights. So, you know, again, same size, 40 to 50%. And I'm just going to tap along the bottom edge of the uh, sketch here. And after that, I'm going to do the same thing with the water blender. And uh, at a smaller size, I guess this time, uh, I'll just pull down the bottom edge just like before. And then at a larger size, I'll finish it up by just sort of tapping the top edge just in a few places just to make it a little bit fluffier looking. And this is looking pretty good. I think now's a good time to switch off the sketch just so we can get a clearer look at this. And at this point, um, this is where you can control the contrast in the clouds. So here we have the highlights. And here we have the midtones. So what I would recommend doing is uh, selecting the layer with the midtones and go to hue, saturation, and brightness for the whole layer and just mess with the brightness until you can find a kind of comfortable level of uh, uh, contrast here in the structure of the cloud. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. So I'll deselect that. And next, I want to add the uh, shadows in the clouds. And those are going to primarily be along the bottom edge here. So what I'm going to do is merge together the highlights and the midtones of the cloud and then zoom out here. And I'm gonna use the selection tool set to freehand. And I'm just gonna select the bottom edge of the cloud and I'm gonna feather it out. I'm gonna to go to hue, saturation, and brightness for the layer and then just sort of darken it just a little bit. There we go. Now I'm gonna grab the water blender and I'm gonna to continue to smooth out this cloud because now our highlights uh, and the midtones and the shadows are all on one layer. Uh, we can sort of address all the inconsisten uh, inconsistencies at once. So I'm just gonna go in there with the water blender and anywhere it doesn't look right, like this area, for example, I can just sort of sort of clean it up with the water blender, just like that. And uh, I also think it looks good if you do go along the outer edge sort of one more time and just sort of fluff that up in just a few areas um, because sometimes the edge of this can look a little bit too defined, although it is important uh, not to totally blur it out because when you do that, it's just too soft. Uh, clouds in reality do have some hard edges. And now for the bottom edge of the cloud here, I, you know, there's a number of things you can do, but I really like to just go over it at a really large size with that water blender and just totally fade it off. So it's almost like it's just fading off into nothing. So there we go. That's it for the cloud here. I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. And uh, now I can work on to the um, sort of distant clouds in the background and there'll be sort of layers and layers. And uh, I'll show you how to do that next. So I'll make a new layer and using pure white, uh, I'm going to grab the abstract round brush and at a smaller size, maybe 20, 25%, I'm just going to create kind of lines like this. And then as I get closer and closer to the land, uh, I'm going to shrink that brush size and try to make, uh, I'm going to attempt to make here thinner and thinner lines. And now to soften this up and make them look more like clouds, I'm going to grab the water blender and at a pretty large size, uh, I'm just going to gently tap it like this. Uh, and then I'm going to try to smear it just a little bit. So I'm going to do these sort of slightly longer strokes like this. There we go. That looks pretty good. But they ended up being a little bit too faint. So I'm just going to try this. Um, here's the layer with those clouds. I want to see what happens if I duplicate it. Maybe one more time. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. So by making three copies of that layer, it just made it sort of like more opaque. 
So I can merge those together and now I have a sort of a wider version of those clouds. And uh, this might happen to you. Um, I know it happens to me a lot. I feel like my clouds end up going too high. Uh, so because those are on a separate layer, I can sort of manipulate those and, and uh, transform them. So if I grab the uh, layer tool and I set it to freeform, I can move those around, but I can also compress them. So if I just grab that top slider and just kind of squish it down, I can actually change uh, the characteristics of those and make them a little bit more, um, I guess, foreshortened. So this scene is almost done. Um, I just wanna move this uh, main cloud a little bit. So I'm gonna select that layer and I just wanna move it down because I felt like it ended up being too high up. There we go, just like that. Uh, and then I can look down here and um, I wanna address this a little bit and give it a little bit of variation. So I'm gonna select that layer, with the land down there. I'm gonna grab the selection tool, set to freehand, and I'm just gonna make a random selection like this. And then I'll feather it out quite a bit then I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness for the layer. And then I can just shift the hue of that sort of random selection and introduce a little bit of magenta in there. And at this point, I can go ahead and merge everything together onto one layer. And uh, you don't have to do this, but if you want, uh, you can add some sort of tall grasses in the foreground here. So to do that, you'll make a new layer and then choose a kind of grass color, a sort of yellowy uh, green color, I think something like that. And for that, I'm gonna use the fine liner pen brush uh, at a pretty, pretty small size. And uh, it's important that you do your brush strokes for these uh, grasses uh, from bottom to top and not from top to bottom because what will happen is uh, it'll start out broader and get skinnier. So what I wanna do is the opposite. Uh, I just wanna start at the bottom and just sort of do the grasses like this. And uh, do them a little bit sparingly at first because uh, I wanna introduce some different colors of grasses there. So I'll switch the color here, make it a little bit more yellow uh, and then do another pass of it. And then as a uh, final pass, I'll choose a very, very dark version of that color and just do a few more. And uh, because those are in the foreground, uh, you could leave them like this, but I actually recommend making them a little bit blurry. And this is kind of simulating uh, what you'd get if you were taking a photograph. And that's why I think it's a little bit optional, but I do like the way it looks. Uh, so to do that, I'm gonna make sure I have the grasses, uh, just that layer selected. And I'm gonna go to the magic wand. And this time I'm gonna use Gaussian Blur. And if I do that for the whole layer, I can click and drag and uh, watch what happens to those grasses. So as I drag further, uh, they get blurrier and blurrier. So what I wanna do is just blur them out just a little bit, just so they're a little bit out of focus. I think that looks pretty good. Then I'm gonna grab the arrow tool and I think I will sort of compress those a little bit just so they don't stand so tall. And uh, once you're satisfied with the way the grass looks, uh, you can merge this together with the uh, main artwork layer there. Uh, and now we can cut it into a square shape because the edges here are a little bit crazy. And usually the way I do that is I use the uh, selection method. I'll make a selection and then cut it out. Uh, but today I wanna show you a slightly more intuitive way to do this. So if I have all the artwork compressed onto this one layer, I can grab the arrow tool, the move tool, I guess. Uh, and if I move it, uh, let's do the uh, top edge here. So if I move it so the top edge is going over the edge of the artboard and then I deselect it, now when I select it again and move it down, it's basically been cut off. So I can use the edge of the artboard uh, as a sort of cutting tool. So now I'm gonna move it over to uh, this edge here. And then I'll deselect it, then select it again, and it's cut that one off and I'll do the other one and then also the bottom edge. And there we go, this one is all done and I'm really satisfied with the way it turned out. And uh, as you can see, uh, it prints out really nicely and I'm looking forward to uh, putting this one in a frame. Now this technique is mostly about clouds or this video is mostly about paint, how to paint clouds. And uh, you could use this in any number of different scenes. So in this case, I just did these kind of rolling fields with that tree line in the distance. Um, but I wanna challenge you to give it a try and try to paint maybe an ocean scene with an island out there, or maybe a desert with some mountains or a road sort of going off into the distance where there's some mountains. Uh, definitely something like that uh, would look really nice, uh, especially with some towering clouds in the distance. And that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, other than that, guys, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.